In this exercise, we'll take a look at how we can modify the orientation of plates. So the first thing I'll do is use the keyboard hotkey shift and the letter T to turn on plate orientation. And we can see that we have a variety of different orientations in this model. If I zoom in a little bit and pan and rotate, we can see that some of the plates have their local Z axes pointing upward and some have local Z axes pointing downward. While it's okay to have plates in a variety of orientations like this as far as an analysis is concerned, it could lead to quite a bit of confusion when it comes to trying to interpret the output results because the tops of some plates would refer to uh, the surface that's closest to us and the tops of other plates would actually be the surfaces facing away from us. So we'd like to bring some consistency to all of the plates in this model. Before we actually apply the command that will do that, I'll use Shift T to turn off plate orientation and I'll use the keyboard hotkey of Shift and the letter P to turn on plate numbers. And I'm going to focus entirely on this plate right here, plate number 31. I'll select it and then say view, new view, create a new window so that we can look just at plate number 31. And then what I'll do is I'll use the keyboard hotkey shift and the letter N to turn on node numbers and we'll observe that Plate number 31 has nodes 1, 41, 32, and 33 as its corner nodes. I'll use the plate's cursor to double click the plate and actually observe the node numbers in order, and they are in that order 1, 41, 32, 33. So this plate was defined in a clockwise orientation. I can also confirm that by turning the plate orientation back on, shift and the letter T, and we can see that if we traced around this plate with the fingers of our right hand, that our right thumb would point down, uh, coordinating with the downward direction of the local Z axis. So shift and the letter T to clean things up just a little bit here, and what we'll do now is come back to our plate query and make one more observation that the Y coordinates of all four corner nodes of this plate are zero. So what this means is that this mesh that we're looking at was created in the Y equals zero elevation. So what we might conceivably want to do is orient all of these plates so that they point with their Z axes upward. The command to do that can be found under the commands item in the menu bar and then geometric constants and plate reference point. In the plate reference point dialog since I know that these plates all exist in the Y equals zero plane all I need to do is enter any positive Y coordinate to identify a point so I'll just enter a value of 10. I'll say that I want the local Z axes to point toward that reference point and then I'll say that I want this to uh, be applied to the entire view rather than just to selected plates and then say OK. The command has just been applied and if I use the keyboard hotkey shift and the letter T to turn on plate orientation and turn off the plate numbers. I can rotate things a little bit and we can now clearly see that all of the Z axes point upward as we intended. The last thing that I'll do is with my plates cursor I'll select this plate number 31 and I will say again view new view create a separate window and I'll now turn on the node numbers shift N 
and we can see that the nodes uh, exist in exactly the same locations. We said before that we had uh, our nodal incidences that went 1, 41, 32, 33. What we'll see now if we query this plate by double clicking is that we have nodes in exactly the opposite order 33, 32, 41, and 1. So the point here is to say that when we change the orientation of a plate the command does not actually move any nodes but instead it just redefines the nodal incidences that are used to establish the direction or orientation of the plate.